Hi there, it's DJB, and in this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to paint a leopard Appaloosa. For this tutorial, I am going to be painting one of Briar's Paint Your Own Dream Horse Stable Mates. This particular one is the Alba Rosso Mold, and I will be taking you step by step on how I customize this particular model into the lovely leopard Appaloosa that you see here. This is going to be a beginner's guide, and all of the tools I am recommending to you are very affordable and easy to find. So starting with the Briar My Dream Horse paint kit, there's a couple different molds that you can get. The first thing you'll need is two grits of sandpaper. I use 220 and 400 to sand down the imperfections of the model. Multi-purpose is best as it will have the least amount of rips. You're going to need an old toothbrush any kind will do. Because we're converting this horse from a unicorn to a horse, I am going to be using the mini hacksaw to remove the horn off of the model. But you can also get away with using just a generic steak knife. This is completely optional as well. I'm also going to be adding primer to the model. I will be using Rust-Oleum in white and make sure that it's the primer, not paint and primer. You can get this pretty much anywhere at, a, at home Hardware, Walmart, Michaels, Hobby Lobby, they're pretty much everywhere. It's a really easy brand to find. It bonds to plastic really easy to use. This step of using primer is optional as well. I would recommend using a primer though as it gives tooth for the paint to stick to which adds durability to your custom and can prevent yellowing. Because your stable mate is blank, if you were to leave it in certain conditions, the plastic of the stable mate can actually yellow. Now when using primer you're going to want to use some kind of respiration system or mask. I do have this 3M respirator with paint filters. You can get a Away with just using a dollar store mask like I have here at the very least just using your basic blue mask to just prevent you from inhaling those particles. You're going to need a rubber glove. I recommend getting a size that fits you good. You're gonna need some paper towel any kind will do. You're going to need a jar or a cup of water and you're going to need something to put your paint on. So I really like using butter, sour cream, or any plastic container lids. I clean these really good and use them for my paint. They're awesome because you can scrape off the paint and reuse them or you can get away with just using a generic paper plate. You can even get away with using cardboard or an actual painter's palette that you can find at the dollar store. For paint, I'm going to be only using affordable craft quality paint. You can buy these at dollar stores, Michaels, Walmart, and I'm just going to show you that you can achieve a level of professionalism in your paintwork using these low quality paints. I do like them because they have a very matte consistency and that's desirable in my paintwork. I have a few brands here. Folk Art is definitely my favorite. Deco Art works as well and you can get away with Americana, kind of any generic brand of just craft acrylic paint. Now optional colors can include a burnt umber or dark brown, a metallic gold, and a flesh skin tone. This particular one is called warm beige. For paint brushes, I'm not going to be using anything super fancy. These are all just synthetic fine point brushes. You're going to need a slightly larger wedge brush as well. These are the two brushes that I ended up using for the most of this tutorial. I do generally use the Windsor and Newton Kalinske Series 7 Sable in triple zero. This brush is really expensive though. It runs about $20 a brush. I would highly recommend if you're getting into custom Customizing, but it's not at all required. For sealing spray, I'm going to be using Americana for this project. You basically just want to make sure that your spray is matte. And this is a finishing spray when you've completed the paintwork. Rust Oleum also makes a really great matte clear coat. I personally use Tester's Dull Coat, which is also really expensive to buy. So I'm just showing you the brands that are really easy to find. And I've used all of these and they all work very well. The one thing I would say to avoid is anything Krylon brand. I do not like Krylon products. I find they're not very reliable. So one thing you really want to pay attention to is a hair growth chart. All horses have the same hair growth patterns and the Appaloosa spots are going to lie along those hair growth patterns. So it's really important to have one of these in your studio to always refer to. I suggest tacking it up to the wall so that it's always there for you. I also recommend finding a really great reference of the type of Appaloosa you're looking to paint and make sure that you print out both of these photos 
but reversed so that you have a photo of each side of the horse. Now you can make up what each side looks like. You don't have to follow the spots exactly, but the general positioning of the spots should be similar. And so flipping the reference makes it so your brain doesn't have to flip the reference and you understand exactly what's happening while you paint. So let's get started. So starting with my dream horse stablemate kit here, I'm just gonna open this guy right up and we're actually not going to be using the paintbrush or the little paint pots that this comes with. So you can put that to the side and you wanna examine your model for any imperfections. So I'm going to start just by cutting off the horn and this is what I wanted to do to create this model into a horse rather than a unicorn. This is completely optional for your personal preference. So just using that hacksaw, I'm just gonna cut it off to a point and it should just wiggle free and snap right off just like so. And you can sand down the rest of the horn. Here I'm showing you that you can do this with a steak knife as well. For the sanding, I like to sand down the Briar logo on the stomach of the model. This just enhances realism. You don't really want the logo imposing on the final paintwork. And I will sand down any seams or imperfections. A lot of these occur on the body of the horse as well as the legs. And I want to make sure to sand down that, that horn bump on his forehead, but not destroying any of the eye sculpture. So you want to be careful not to take too much off. You can use that old toothbrush to just brush away the loose dust. This is a sneaky little tip that works really well. And then I'm going to be getting my mask and my primer ready. But before we do this, we definitely want to give the model a little rinse so that no bits and pieces are inside of the primer coat. So I just rinse the model in some warm water, making sure to get all the little crevices. And if you're impatient like I am, you can actually speed up the drying process using a hairdryer. This is really easy You'd hair dry on the hot setting to dissolve all of the water so that you can prime the model right away. You don't want to dry the model with a towel because towels can leave little hairs, lints, or dust particles. You want the model to either air dry or dry by hair dryer. Then you may want to make sure you go outside to prime your horse and you're going to hold it in one hand with a glove and prime like so. So you can see me doing short bursts rather than just coating the model. It's better to do a multiple coats than just one heavy coat that can cause the primer to do weird things and I will just set this model on a piece of paper to dry generally I like to bring my models inside to cure so you want to make sure that you leave the model now for 24 hours to cure and we're gonna come back in and start the painting process so using these fine tip paint brushes, I'm gonna find which one I like best. Got my water ready, my paint palette, and my fully primed Alborozo horse. Making sure to put on a glove. This eliminates any fingerprints that you would get onto the model. So starting with my black paint, I add a little tiny bit of water to that, just to dilute it down. So the biggest thing we're watching for here is following close to reference. Also making sure the paint is not super thick, so it's creating a gloss on the model you want it to be smooth and by adding the water this is going to smooth it down quite a bit you also want to understand the hair growth pattern of horses and you want to be following this with the spots so definitely study some Appaloosa horses before you jump into a project like this to understand which way their spots go this is what will set your custom apart and give it a sense of realism so I'm just gonna go about with this tiny brush and creating the first black layer you don't have to be super particular in it being a hundred percent opaque this is just a base layer for all of the spots. This is really the halo pattern for each individual spot. And we're gonna be going back over these a second time. When painting this original layer, you want to make the spots a little bit bigger than what you want the final piece to be. Because this is just the halo, when we add the internal spot, it's going to be a little bit smaller. For the hindquarters, the spots generally get bigger on Appaloosa horses. So these are the more typical Appaloosa spots that you would see. And the spots that go along the neck and the shoulders and the belly can be a lot smaller than these big 
rump spots. These are really fun to paint for me personally. I love creating the larger blanket patterns. That being said, not all Appaloosa horses are the same, so you could follow a reference that has larger spots all over the model or smaller spots all over the model. It's totally personal preference. I just find that I like this style of Appaloosa the best, so that's what I gravitate to painting. You definitely want to pick projects and coat colors that you like painting because that makes the process so much easier. A disclaimer as well is that I'm going very slow and not rushing the process. This model took me five and a half hours to complete, start to finish, so you're not going to achieve a level of realism without sitting down and really putting the time into your project. For the face, I'm going to darken it up quite a bit, so starting with some little spots, and I'm actually going to fill in majority of the face. So Appaloosas do have a lot of mottling around their eyes, their muzzle, and their groin area. I don't like this particular trait that shows up on Appaloosas, and because I want this to be like a dream horse, I'm going to paint it to the desirability that I enjoy. For majority of the face, it is going to be quite dark, and he's going to have a few spots, mainly on the forehead head and down the sides of the cheek, but he's going to have no pinking. For the legs, the same kind of thing. I want him to have the dark point legs. Some Appaloosa's large scale spots, but I want this guy to have his solid black leg. So I'm blending those spots into the leg, but I'm also going to leave a little bit of white at the bottom of his leg for a nice sock marking. So I make this up kind of as I go, following reference, but not too closely, making it my own as well. So on this back leg, I'm actually painting it completely solid. And after I'm done, I'm gonna go back in with a finer paintbrush and just add a few tiny, tiny little dots that I couldn't achieve with that other paintbrush. And we have the finished model. So I repeat this process on the chest, the belly, and the opposite side. Following my reference, hair growth patterns, and being true to Appaloosa coat color. And this is how I consider this phase done. Now you wanna set the model aside for at least an hour to have it fully cure. This paint dries quickly, but sometimes it can be deceiving. We're gonna bring out our white paint and we're gonna water this down quite a bit. So here's me watering that down significantly. And I'm going to do a white wash over all of the spots I just painted on. The white wash is going to create the halo around each spot. This is the easiest way that I've found to do this. And you want to make this paint thin so that the spot will show through. And you wanna paint in the direction of the hair growth so that if you have some streakiness to this paint, it's okay because it adds the effect of hair texture. So I'm gonna go over all of the sides and places of this model, but I'm gonna leave most of the legs alone because those are going to remain black. Anywhere that I want a halo around the edge of the marking is where I'm going to paint this white. You want this white to be pretty consistent all throughout the body. Mm -hmm. 
And the next step is going back into all of those spots that you originally made and delicately painting a spot on the inside of those halo marks. So this creates an edging for each spot and allows that really cool realistic effect of mapping on each of these markings. For some of the spots you can leave a larger edge, for some of them you can leave a smaller edge. It's totally up to you following your reference closely like before and being really delicate and careful. I keep the paint watered down a little bit but not too much that it's going to take too many coats. I add enough water so that it's smooth and it won't lump up on the horse. So you're just going to run through the entire body of the horse with this method. Working into the leg is the same thing. I'm going to be leaving some haloing on the top of the leg, but the remainder of the leg is going to be that solid opaque black. For the face, I am painting a lot of opaqueness as well, but leaving some of those spots to have some haloing on them so he has a few freckles on his face. So here we have the finished paint job of all of these spots on the body. This took a while to do, so don't rush be patient. For the tail, I'm going to start with a base coat of black using that larger wedge paintbrush and some water mixed in with that paint as well to make it low on a little bit better. You can see that using the glove helps with handling the model on that final paint coat. For the mane, I'm just going to use a combination of black and white. And I like to have this paint watered down quite a bit so that it flows really easily over the texture of the hair. So coming off the crest of the neck, we want the darker strips of mane to match up with spots that line up on the exterior side of the neck. And this is just the natural horse color genetics where there's dark, there is usually dark mane, where there's white, there's usually white mane. And I'm just going to be slowly intertwining these two colors until I achieve the desired effect. It's a lot of going back and forth between the colors, watering the paint down, letting things dry, and painting a lot of texture. I find that painting dark colors in the swells of the sculpture helps add some depth, and the light colors can go on the higher points of the sculpture. I do actually give in and move to my fancy paintbrush to just add some extra fine herring details that I can't quite achieve with those cheaper brushes because I haven't found the greatest cheap brush in my studio because I am so adamant on using <laughs> these fancy Windsor Newton paintbrushes. This is obviously not at all required. This is my personal style preference. For the tail, I'm adding some white on the top as well. So coming down from the body, there's going to be a bit of extra white on the top of the tail. And then I'm going to texture down through the rest of the tail as well with some white shading highlights.
for the details within the feet, I'm just adding some herring edging to the top of these foot markings. And that just helps blend the black into the white so it's not a harsh edge but rather a detailed haired edge. Then I'm going to be taking some white and black paint to create a gray mixture. I'm going to use this gray mixture on the dark leg. So naturally horses who have black legs have gray hooves. When they have a white sock, they have a slightly lighter or pink colored hoof. And so for those pink colored hoofs, we're going to add some skin tone. Now you could get away with just using a lighter gray on these guys as well. Because Appaloosas have striped hooves, this is kind of what they ended up looking like and the easiest way to create the striping is just banning your brush alongside your paint tray like this and that separates the bristles to create a individual herring detail you want to make sure that you not only go up and down but side to side in the hoof painting the hoof not only grows in vertical stripes but it also grows in horizontal stripes so I layer these up with different shades of gray skin tone white and black to achieve the design desired effect. For the bottom of the hooves, I accent the outer rim and the frog with dark colors while putting some lighter colors on the inside of the hoof that doesn't touch the ground as much. Taking a little bit of white, I'm going to create a dramatic eye white and taking that chocolate brown burnt umber color, I'm going to add the iris of the eye, then a little bit of black for the pupil the same on the other side. You can see that this paintbrush comes in really handy for these instances. You could get away with just leaving the eye black or painting it just black and white to achieve this similar effect. I like to sparkle up my eyes with a tiny bit of gold. This adds a sense of realism and sheen in the light, so I just put that on the underside of each eye. I also add some white into the ears to create some hair texture that will just add some realism to the final piece. and we are complete. So I can head on outside again with my sealing spray. I'm using the Americana kind and I spray the model in a similar kind of way, holding onto the tail to spray the majority of the body. Then I will switch my hand position to hold the rest of the model to spray the sides that I didn't get the first time. Then we go back into the studio once the model is dry and I can add my triple thick gloss to the eyes, a little bit in the nostrils, and each four feet. And there we have the finished piece, a fully transformed briar unicorn to wonderful leopard appaloosa. This is a really easy technique that I think is really convincing and beautiful to paint. The biggest thing with painting is to be patient, not to rush things. Like I said before, this horse took me five and a half hours to complete start to finish. It's a tedious process, so making sure you have small enough brushes can really make or break your custom and understanding your reference and how real life horses work. This has been DJB Studios. Happy customizing! Thank you so much for watching.